Will we finally see the drafts of Hinman's speech? Why does Ripple think the commission cannot hide under the attorney-client privilege? Will the delay tactics work again? Stay tuned till the end of the video to find out. But first, we are giving away 25 XRP at the end of the month to one random subscriber to start on their XRP journey. All you need to do is to like the video, subscribe and comment your thoughts on XRP in the comment section. Welcome back XRP Army. Let's grow the XRP Lab community by pressing the like button and subscribing to this channel to stay updated at all times. Ripple lawyers have just now responded, and in this response, they were effectively dismantling the Security and Exchange Commission reasoning as to why they do not have the client attorney privilege. With all of these conversations surrounding Bill Hinman's speech, all of the email talks, all of the individuals who were on these email chains, and all of the information that was received, it does not in fact have the client attorney privilege. And so this was really a very well thought out and very well argued argument by Ripple lawyers, particularly Matt Solomon, who is a master at breaking down the security and exchange commission arguments. I will do my best to explain everything that the lawyers for Ripple have produced. There were really five things that they brought up in their discussion. Number one, the Security and Exchange Commission has not yet established that Hinman communicated with Security and Exchange Commission staff about his speech for the purpose of obtaining or providing legal advice. The communication between client and counsel that was made with the intention of being kept secret and was really kept confidential is protected by the attorney-client privilege. This communication was made for the purpose of getting or delivering legal advice. Only if the major objective of the communication is to render or seek legal advice, can a communication be considered to have been made for the purpose of getting or delivering legal advice, even if it only obliquely touches legal principles. In addition, the advice of an attorney on non-legal concerns, like communications or policy, is not protected by the attorney-client privilege. To put it another way, there is a considerable difference between the advice that can be rendered only by consulting the legal authorities and the advice that can be given by a non-lawyer. In other words, the advice that can be rendered only by consulting the legal authorities is in a different category. The communications that are the subject of this dispute do not pass this test since the primary aim for which they were initiated was not to seek legal counsel. Rather, in Hinman and the Security and Exchange Commission words, the purpose of Hinman circulating the draft was to discuss Hinman thoughts with other Commission employees as part of the Commission ongoing deliberations about whether offers and sales of Ether constituted securities transactions. So, that means it includes the opinions of the whole Commission. What do you think? Second thing is that, Ripple attorneys say that, Hinman did not have an attorney-client relationship with Security and Exchange Commission lawyers in his personal capacity. The fact that Mr. Hinman made the speech in his own capacity and not on behalf of the Security and Exchange Commission is further evidence that the stance taken by the Commission is without merit and should be rejected. The existence of a client-attorney connection between the persons involved in a communication is a prerequisite for making a claim of attorney-client privilege. It has already been decided by the court that Hinman delivered his speech in his own capacity and that it reflected his own viewpoint. In a similar manner, the Securities and Exchange Commission attempt to make connections between Hinman contacts and those between Security and Exchange Commission Commissioner Michael Pivowar and Valerie Shipanik is fruitless. The court came to the conclusion that Shipanik had a conversation with Commissioner Pivowar in order to provide him with some guidance that he may subsequently implement in his capacity as an official commissioner. The Security and Exchange Commission, on the other hand, admits that these discussions were about what Hinman could say in his personal address. According to both his own admissions and those of the Security and Exchange Commission, Hinman was not looking for legal counsel about what the law required. Rather, he was looking for responses to a speech that he intended to deliver in his personal capacity. The third thing is, the disclosure of the communications would not reveal Security and Exchange Commission confidences. Also, the Commission has not shown that withholding these papers will fulfill the overarching objective of the privilege, which is to preserve sensitive information. Because the privilege has the potential to stop the fact finder from accessing important information, it is only used in situations when this is absolutely required to accomplish its goal. As a result, it only protects the disclosures that are required to seek informed legal counsel and that otherwise would not have been disclosed in the absence of the privilege. 
In their brief, the Security and Exchange Commission focuses solely on the requirement that the drafts and comments were kept confidential and that Hinman did not forfeit his privilege by sharing the documents with individuals with whom doing so would have waived the privilege. In other words, the privilege was forfeited when Hinman shared the documents with individuals with whom doing so would have waived the privilege. To prove that the ostensible privilege was not inadvertently relinquished is not sufficient. Rather, the Security and Exchange Commission has the burden of demonstrating that the communications in question included secret information in the first place. What do you think? Does it have any secret government information? The fourth thing is. The Security and Exchange Commission lacks standing to assert the attorney-client privilege on behalf of Hinman. Even if the Commission was correct in asserting that Hinman emails were privileged, which it is not, the Security and Exchange Commission provides no basis for concluding that the privilege in question is their privilege. This is because the Commission was wrong in asserting that Hinman emails were privileged. Rather, Hinman would have the right to exercise his privilege in the event that he was obtaining legal counsel in his personal capacity. Therefore, the Securities and Exchange Commission has no right to make a claim of privilege about email exchanges that Hinman had with others while he was preparing to give a speech in his personal capacity. It makes just as much sense to say that Hinman was seeking personal legal counsel from his co-workers at the Security and Exchange Commission on the applicability of the securities laws to specific digital assets, but to claim that he was doing so is a complete waste of time. In any case, these records do not enjoy any kind of privilege and hence cannot be kept from the ripple. And lastly, the Security and Exchange Commission should submit its DPP redactions and any documents to be withheld or redacted under the attorney-client privilege for in-camera inspection. Finally, Ripple has sought that the court conduct an in-camera assessment of such redactions. In addition, Ripple has requested that the court review the remaining documents in camera to determine whether or not they contain legal advice or confidential information that is protected by the privilege. If the court finds that there is no attorney-client relationship between Hinman and the Security and Exchange Commission staff with regard to comments on a draft speech given in Hinman personal capacity, then it will be game over for the commission. What do you think? Well, the Securities and Exchange Commission has accomplished a great deal up to this point, and this is just one more item to add to the lengthy list. Which is delay after delay after delay, making up stuff along the way, and doing things that they are aware they cannot get away with but are doing anyway. Because it pushes the judge to engage in a decision-making process that takes a whole week. Naturally, Ripple is required to reply, which often takes weeks, which is just what the Security and Exchange Commission is hoping for. Nonetheless, I have very little faith that the Security and Exchange Commission will prevail in this argument, given that they were unsuccessful with all of the other justifications that they presented in an effort to conceal Bill Hinman emails. However, we will of course have to wait for that judgment. Make sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Kindly note that the prices of cryptocurrencies frequently change, so by the time you watch this video, it might have changed to a whole new value. The information provided in this video does not constitute investment advice, financial advice, trading advice, or any other sort of advice, and you should not treat any of the content as such. The content in this video is for educational purposes only and hence should not be considered financial advice. Do conduct your due diligence and consult your financial advisor before making any investment decisions.